So it seems that Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, will have optional microtransactions. Yay! This has unfortunately become a trend in the gaming industry, and it's a trend that I react to like an episode of The View. It gets on my nerves, and I just want it to go away. It's become the norm to see another major release plagued with this crappy nickel and diming business model, and it needs to stop. When I saw the news about one of my most anticipated games from one of my favorite franchises, including design elements solely there to appease the greedy corporate overlords, I made my disdain clear on Twitter. A follower of mine responded to my tweet with the opinion that it's a necessary evil in gaming nowadays, and something I just have to live with. And to that I say, no I don't. We went back and forth for a bit, and I felt it necessary to address their points in commentary form, because I see them all the time, and I'm frankly tired of seeing weak excuses for microtransactions being thrown around when it's clear to me that their inclusion is almost never anything more than a cash grab aimed at exploiting those who have more money than time and sense. To be clear, I'm not trying to attack this person for having their opinion. I'm merely providing my own view to each point that they brought up to me. Okay? Okay. Point number one, if you don't want micro DLC, then we can't have used games and piracy. The point being made here is that these shitty business practices must be included since there are ways to acquire games other than buying them new, which takes money away from the developer. Yes, buying a game used means the retailer is getting all the revenue from the sale. But I'm going to go out on a limb here and say most people buy games new, especially now that digital marketplaces are becoming the norm. Most people want to play the most recent games as soon as they're available, and will buy them day one so that they can be one of the first to experience them. And if your game is high quality, most people will want to keep it long term anyway. If multiple copies of your game are lining the U shelves the week of its release, that's probably a good statement of its quality or the amount of content it had to offer. As for piracy, all I can say to that is, pirates will always pirate. It doesn't matter how good your game is or what you offer long term, the small percentage out there that want to steal it will steal it no matter what. And implementing things that no one likes, such as microtransactions, will only make the temptation to pirate that much stronger for those on the fence. Point number two, the cost of development is extremely high. Games are certainly expensive to make, I agree, but instead of using some of that budget to create some kind of microtransaction system, which likely influences how you design your game, which requires additional development time and testing to figure out where best to implement it for maximum revenue, which can also mean creating tons of purchasable skins and upgrades that most of your audience will never use because they're locked behind a paywall, why not use the budget to its fullest potential and improve your base product to make it more enticing to players in the first place? As a recent example, I'd like to bring up The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. With a reported budget of around $70 million, which, by the way, is about 30% the budget of GTA V, they managed to create a game that is being regarded as not only one of the best RPGs of all time, but one of the best games of all time, period. A massive, detailed world, tons of content to sink your teeth into, great writing, and high-caliber voice acting, all created for a fraction of the cost of other high-profile AAA games. Oh, and there's tons of free DLC on the way, and no anti-consumer bullshit like microtransactions. What did that all amount to? Four million copies sold in the first two weeks. By using every cent of its budget and every second of its development time to create the best experience they could, and by treating the consumer with respect, they more than made their money back. Now, imagine if all developers did that. Point number three, microtransactions are optional and up to the player to purchase. That is irrelevant. It doesn't matter if they're optional or not. Microtransactions have no place in a full retail product. I already paid 60 or 50 or 40 or 30 or 20 dollars for your game. You've made your money off me. Please stop trying to bleed my wallet dry. As an example of why them being included is bullshit, regardless of how optional they are, let's talk about MGS5. Reportedly, you'll have a mother base where you can acquire and upgrade weapons and equipment, all of which take time to research. Real world time like you'd find in a free-to-play mobile game. You can either wait for this timer to finish to get your new shiny gun, or you can pay real-world cash and unlock it instantly. Are you fucking kidding me? So let's say you and I are both playing MGS5 and having a grand old time. We're doing missions, sneaking around guards, hiding in cardboard boxes, all that fun stuff. 
So we both go to research a bunch of new guns and equipment that will make sneaking around and combat easier, or just more varied and fun. You go to unlock all these neat toys, only to be told you'll have to wait four hours for them to become available, while I can just pay and get them right now. So now I'm running around with better stuff than you, while you're being punished for not opening your wallet and spending more than the original asking price. How does that sound okay to you? Point number four, if you desire worthwhile content, become a developer yourself. No, I'm not a developer. I have no idea how to turn lines of code into giant living, breathing worlds, and I certainly don't have the patience to ever do so. But why does that matter? Am I required to be a chef to critique the food at a restaurant, or a director to point out the flaws in a film? I'm not a mechanic either, but I'm pretty sure if I went to a car dealership and they tried to sell me a car that required me to insert $5 every time I wanted to turn on the radio or roll up my window, I think I'd be well within my rights to call bullshit. I'm not a developer, but I am a consumer, a customer. Therefore, I have every right to express my disdain for the products I'm expected to pay for. That's how the free market works. If I don't like something about your game, I have every right to say so. Now, with all of my bitching, does that mean I'm not going to buy Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain? No, I still have every intention to buy it. Call me a hypocrite if you want, but it's a series I've been a fan of for a long time, and even consider the original Metal Gear Solid on PlayStation one of my favorite games ever. Does that make me okay with the decision to have microtransactions, asking me to spend a few bucks every time I try to research something? Hell fucking no! If it wasn't a series that I loved, a game that I very much want to play, I'd strongly consider not picking it up. It's when I'm on the fence about a purchase that knowing about some money-grubbing microtransaction system tips the scales negatively, regardless of the game's quality, like it did with Mortal Kombat 10. I'm not a big fighting game guy, but I was strongly considering picking up the game, as by all accounts it's a lot of gory fun, until I learned of all the easy fatality stuff, series staple Goro being locked behind a paywall, and the option to skip all in-game progression for a one-time fee. Things like that just leave a terrible, rancid taste in my mouth, and makes me long for the days where game design was driven by passion and the desire to make a good product, instead of grabbing your customers by the ankles, holding them upside down, and trying to shake a few extra bucks out of them. <sighs> well guys, those are my thoughts on all this microtransaction nonsense. But what are yours? Do you hate them as much as I do, or do you consider them to not be a big deal? Are my points valid, or incredibly dumb? Please feel free to let me know either way in the comments, and if you enjoyed this commentary, consider leaving a rating, because if people like this style of video, then maybe I'll do more of them in the future. Thanks so much for listening, everyone, and I'll see you another time. Bye!